Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is another 12 volts 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This one was sent in from Vetrar, and the model number is LM12100. I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. Now, what caught my eye with this battery is that it has some advanced features that you don't find on most of the batteries. Besides having low temperature charging cutoff at 41 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite standard nowadays, it also has low temperature discharging cutoff when the temperature drops below minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, LFP batteries can be safely discharged in lower temperature environments, but the capacity is significantly reduced. What is a little bit unusual is that this Vetrar battery also has built-in battery heating pads. If you are charging the battery when the core temperature is below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, the internal heater will be turned on first, and once the core temperature is above 41 degrees Fahrenheit, charging will automatically resume. I haven't been able to test this feature myself just because it's a little bit warmer outside now, but some other YouTubers had verified that this indeed works. Now, the built-in heater is only 90 watts, so it will take quite a while to bring the battery cells up to temperature, especially if it is extremely cold. The battery also supports Bluetooth, and you can use a phone app to monitor the charging and discharging of the battery, which is quite convenient. Now, as you can see here, Vatrar actually calls it differently. They call it app connection. So at first, if you look at the label here, it's not very obvious that it actually supports Bluetooth, but it does. Now, obviously, with all these added features also means added price. This battery is definitely more expensive than some of the other batteries I had reviewed before, but it is quite comparable with other batteries offering similar features. It is a Group 31 size battery, so the dimensions are on the larger side compared to some of the other batteries I had reviewed before. Before we go any further, let's actually take a look at the supplied product manual. And you can see that the maximum charging and discharging current here is rated at 100 amps for the 12 volts 100 amp hour battery. Of course, for the 200 amp hour battery, it is doubled. Now, the battery we have here is, of course, the 100 amp hour version, so we will concentrate on this column. Now, what is interesting is you can see that we didn't say anything about the maximum surge current capacity of the battery, so I guess we'll have to test it out later. And here we have the warranty policy. And here you have the charging method, and so on and so forth. With most of the LFP batteries, you can connect up to 4 in parallel and 4 in series. But for this battery, you can see that you can connect 4 in series to 48 volts, and also you can connect a maximum of 10 batteries in parallel. So that's a little bit different. Although on the website, it says it's only up to 4 in parallel. Not entirely sure which one is correct, 4 or 10. And here is more about the battery, BMS. And this paragraph here, it talks about the heating pad here. Basically, when the temperature is below zero, you will actually use a heating pad to first heat up the battery, and then it will start charging. So that's what he is talking about here. And on the right-hand side, you can see we have the discharge curve. Now, you can actually learn quite a bit about LFP batteries from the curve here. You can see that the overall capacity of the battery actually is not dependent on the discharge rate here, at least to some degree. The second graph down here shows you the battery capacity in relation to the temperature, as I mentioned earlier. While you can safely discharge LFP batteries at lower temperatures, the capacity would drop significantly. You can see here at minus 10 degrees Celsius, the capacity actually dropped to about 75% of the nominal capacity. And let's see what else. The top graph here shows you the relationship between the cycle life and the discharge depth. You can see that with a discharge depth of 100%, you only get around 2,000 cycles. But if you are doing much shallower discharge, for example at 30%, then you can get up to 8,000 cycles. So the numbers shown here are actually very consistent with other LFP batteries. Now, what I'm not sure is whether these figures are specifically for Vatra batteries, or it's just for LFP batteries in general. As to produce these figures, you will need to have a very large sample size. Now, I'm not sure why the figure is actually duplicated on the right-hand side here. You can see it's exactly the same as the left one. But anyway, here we also have the charging characteristics and also the discharge curve against different temperatures. You can actually see that for LFP batteries, the self-discharging is actually quite low. Even with elevated temperatures at 50 degrees Celsius, you can see that with 8 months in storage, you are still able to maintain 80% of the battery capacity. Now, obviously, we have no way of verifying the battery degradation and cycle life in this short video. 
but I will be using this battery with my other batteries regularly and will report back if I see any issues. So far, I haven't experienced any issues with any of the batteries that I have reviewed on this channel, but I will definitely let you know if I do. All right, let's see what else. Ah, here is the phone app. Now, I'm actually not sure why it's recommending this specific app. As you can clearly see, it's rated very poorly. I actually downloaded it, but I don't like it because it asks you for registration. I'll actually show you in a little bit. But anyway, Vachar actually has its own app, which is actually quite decent. So I'm actually not sure why in the manual it recommends you using this specific app. Anyway, let me show you the app here. So here are the apps you can see. I actually downloaded this app recommended by the Vachar manual. But if you look at it, it just asks you for login. And interestingly, the English is not very good here. It says jump login, which means skip login. Anyway, so you can skip it. And you recognize a bunch of connected batteries here. Of course, I have multiple in the lab. And this one you can see here, that's the battery back there. And it has been charged. You can see all the stats of the battery. So pretty good here. Then you can go to parameters and you can see some of the basic information of the battery. And you can set different names if you have multiple batteries. This actually is a very handy feature. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on this specific app because I don't like it. So let me show you the Vatra specific app. So let's take a look at this one. So here again, we're connected to the battery here. And let's take a look here. Dashboard. You can see that all the information is right at your fingertip. And we can go down here. You can see the voltage of each individual cell. This is after it's balanced. You can see that they're actually fairly close within roughly 10 millivolts of each other. So that's pretty good. Anyway, we'll take a look at this app again when this battery is in use. To test the battery capacity, I first fully charge up the battery to 14.6 volts using the recommended 20 amps charging current. And after the battery is fully charged, I held the voltage at 14.6 volts for a few more hours, allowing the battery cells to be balanced. You can actually see this balancing in action on the phone app. And once the cells are balanced, their voltages are actually within 10 millivolts of each other. To discharge the battery, I chose a 0.1C discharge rate, which is 10 amps, using my electronic loads battery testing feature. One benefit of LFP battery is that the discharge curve is fairly flat compared to other battery chemistries. So the terminal voltage does not drop significantly until the very end of the discharging cycle. I set the cutoff voltage to 9 volts on the electronic load side. And you can see that there is actually some voltage drop across the wires used. So the voltage across the battery terminals is actually quite a bit higher than what is reported on the electronic load. So in reality, the actual cutoff voltage is around probably 10 volts. Now, I did capture the moment of the cutoff. As you can see, the battery voltage dropped off very rapidly towards the end. We're able to get over 104 amp hours out of the battery, which is excellent. And this is definitely on the higher end of the measured capacities among all the 100 amp hour batteries I have tested. Here you can see that we're measuring the internal resistance of the battery with the HRM10 internal resistance meter. Now, the spec didn't actually mention anything about the internal resistance, but you can see that here we're measuring about just under 13 milliohms. The rated maximum current is 100 amps continuous. So let's actually test that out with an electric heater with the inverter. And to control the output current draw, I'm using a variac and using that to control the power delivered to the heater. So now let's power on the inverter. And let's power on the variac. So I'm going to gradually increase the output voltage. So let's actually set it at 100 amps. And by the way, you can see here, the app also shows currently it's showing around 91 amps. So there's a little bit of discrepancy between what is reported by the meter versus what is reported by the battery, but it's not too far off, So which is good. So I adjusted the variac output, and I think we're stabilizing around 100 amps now. So let me run it for a few minutes and see what the situation is like. Now, we have been running like this for a few minutes. And one thing nice about having a phone app is that you can actually see the internal temperature here reported by the app. Right now we're at 62 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually only 10 degrees higher than what we started with. 
So that's definitely not an issue. And of course, the temperature you can see here is still rising as we are only a few minutes in. I don't anticipate writing much higher than 65 degrees, perhaps. Now I want to find out how much margin we have on that 100 amps current rating. So for that, I added another inverter just because this inverter is only rated for 1500 watts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two heaters, one connected to this inverter and the other one connected to this inverter and using the Variac to adjust the output. So hopefully we can get a sense of the maximum load the battery can support. And let's try it again. And this time I'm going to start the second one gradually. So let's go to 120. One thirty. So it seems it's right around 130, and you can see that it shut off again. And now the battery had recovered. Let's try it one more time. This time I'm going to go to 120. So it appears actually the protection would kick in right around 120 amps. Now I'm actually curious to see whether or not we can start an electric drill with this battery. If you remember here, the drill I'm using here, the starting current is around 160 amps to 170 amps on the battery side. All right, let me turn on the inverter again. Just want to warn you, when I start the drill, it will be a little bit loud. One, two, three. One, two, three. Looks like there's no problem. Now, of course, we want to kick it off the notch. So for this test, I'm going to actually run it at full capacity with an electric heater and see if we can start the drill simultaneously. So now we're drawing roughly 100 amps. So let's see if we can start the drill. One, two, three. One, two, three. No problem. And after the test we just done, I left it running with the heater on. And you can see right now we're drawing right around 100 amps. By the way, the meter is reading 103 amps. And here on the phone, you can see the app is reporting right around 100 amps. So give or take, there's some discrepancy, but that's probably well within the error tolerance. Anyway, you can see that current state of charge is 81%. And we have the batteries, you can see here, the voltage difference among all the batteries is roughly 20 millivolts. So that is pretty good. And you can see that right now the temperature is only at 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not an issue at all. From today's testing, the Vatra LM12100 100Amp LFP battery performed quite well. In our capacity testing, we managed to get more than 104 amp hours from the battery. So this suggests that Vatra is likely using quality prismatic cells inside. Now, it did mention in the manual that the cells used are of EV grade. The battery was also able to handle the maximum rated current with no issue, and the built-in protection is actually quite good. The Bluetooth connectivity along with the phone app makes monitoring much easier. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.